All right, Algebra 1A students. Welcome to part one of lesson one, two. Uh, we're going to talk today about order of operations, uh, using the order of operations to evaluate uh, numerical expressions, uh, expressions with all numbers. And then uh, in our next video, we'll get into some algebraic expressions with order of operations. Um, but for this video, the first thing that we need to talk about are exponents. Hopefully, we understand exponents a little bit uh, before getting here. Hopefully, uh, doing certain exponents, like maybe squaring something, raising something to the second power, is something we can already do. Okay, so uh, an exponent always comes with a base number, and the exponent tells you how many times you need to use the base number as a factor. Okay. So make sure you write that down. The exponent tells you how many times to use the base number as a factor. Now, when we talk about factors, we mean multiplying things together. Okay. So, for example, when we see 2 to the third power right over here, because we have this 3 right here in the exponent, that tells me that I need three twos to be multiplied together. 1, 2, 3 twos all multiplied together. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 makes... 8. So 2 to the third power equals 8. Okay. So the exponent number, the little number up on top of the big number, tells you how many times to multiply that base number together by itself. So 2 to the third means three twos get multiplied together. Okay. Uh, if we did 5 squared or 5 to the second power, that would be two fives multiplied together. 5 times 5, just two times because there's a 2 here in our exponent. Okay. Uh, now, most of your practice problems when we get to class are going to be asking you to simplify certain expressions. Okay, And we simplify a numerical expression by getting just a single number value. So one number value. To simplify means to get one number value, a single number value. Okay, So make sure you write that down. Simplify means to get a single number value number value. You can replace the word numerical with uh, number. Single number value. Okay. Single number. So when we get a simplified answer for these numerical expressions, it should just be one number. Okay. Uh, if we look at a couple examples of exponents, a couple more examples anyway, uh, we have a couple down here. The first one being 10 to the seventh power. Okay, 10 to the seventh power. 10 to the seventh power means they want seven tens all multiplied together. 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Times 10. Seven times multiplied together. Okay. Now powers of 10 are kind of special and kind of nice. We can certainly use a calculator for this. Uh, that would be okay with me when we get very large powers like this. Uh, but Really, powers of 10 are just about how many zeros come after the 1. So what I want you to notice is 10 to the 7th power has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 zeros. 7 zeros after the 1. So when we do 10 to the 7th power, it's a 1 with 7 zeros. If I asked you to do 10 to the 8th power, it'd be a 1 with 8 zeros. If I asked you to do 10 to the 10th power, it'd be a 1 with 10 zeros. Okay? 10 to the 2nd power, obviously just a one with two zeros after it, or a hundred. But it's certainly okay to use a calculator for these kinds of things when we have to. 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Seven times, because that's our exponent up there. Okay? Same thing uh, when we're doing 0 0.2 to the fifth power. Okay, 0 0.2 to the fifth power. Now, your calculator will not always give you this answer. They might give you something weird in scientific notation. Um, so we'll have to be careful of that. I will uh, try not to give you too many problems like this where it's going to give you some crazy decimal with a lot of zeros in it. Um, but here, when we see 0 0.2 to the fifth power, the thing I want you to realize is that the 5 tells me I need 5 0 0.2s all multiplied together. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of them all multiplied together and we get 0 0.00032 when we use our calculator for that. Okay. Now I would like you to try uh, a, B, and C right here, simplifying these down, evaluating these powers. Uh, the one that may be a little bit tricky for you is letter B here. Um, but I want you to write this one out. In fact, I'll do it for you right now. 
it's 2 over 3 times another 2 over 3 times another 2 over 3, right? Because it's 2 over 3 3 times. Now, when we evaluate that, we just have to time straight across the top and straight across the bottom. Okay, no cross multiplying or anything crazy. Just multiply the numbers on the top. That's the top. Multiply the numbers on the bottom. That's the bottom of your fraction. Okay, so go ahead and take a look uh, at A, B, and C here. Simplify these powers down and get me just one number as an answer. Uh, when you've got those three answers, come on back and I'll show you what we should have here. Okay, the first one, uh, 3 to the 4th power should be 81. 2 thirds to the 3rd power should be 8 on the top of a fraction with 27 on the bottom of the fraction, 8 over 27. And then here, 0. 0.5 to the 3rd is 0. 0.125. And 0. 0.125. Hopefully you got those three answers correct and you're feeling pretty okay about evaluating exponents like uh, like these. Okay, evaluating exponents. The reason we have to be able to do that is because uh, the order of operations is very, very important when we're solving math problems. Okay, um, We can kind of think about solving different, uh, or let's take this example here, 2 plus 3 times 5 in two different ways. Okay. One of those ways would be to do 2 plus 3, which is 5, 5 times 5, which is 25. Okay, so one possible answer uh, is 25. The other possible answer, of course, is 17, because we could do 3 times 5 first, right? Do the 3 times 5 first, and then when you get that done, then we do the add 2. Okay, so two different answers from just doing things in two different orders or two different ways. Okay, so it's important for us when we do math problems to get a set list or a set order of the way that we do things when we solve math problems. Otherwise, the person next to you might end up with 25 as an answer and you might end up with 17. Okay, so here's the general order that we do things in. Okay, uh, and there's this nice little uh, acronym, GEMA, which is GEMA. GEMA, G-E-M-A, um, and that stands for the order that we should do things in. Okay, so this is first, this is second, this is third, and then this is fourth. Okay, so the first thing we do is anything that has been grouped together already in the problem, usually by parentheses. Sometimes they'll use some square brackets, uh, and sometimes it's actually things on the top of a fraction and the bottom of a fraction. We have to do those two first as well before we deal with the fraction part, okay? So things are parts of the problem that have been grouped together already. Most often in parentheses are the things you do very, very first right away when you start, okay? Uh, second, then we deal with all the exponents like we were doing on the last slide, okay? We deal with exponents, um, and by default, we also deal with radicals, things called square roots, which we'll get to later in this class, okay? But exponents come next in the order of operations. After that, the M stands for multiplying, and then we know the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So multiplication and division, they're kind of the same thing in the order of operations, and we do do those two things together, uh, just going from left to right. Okay, so when we have multiplication and division, if there's more than one, we just go from the left side of the equation to the right side, doing the left side first, and then the right side, okay, left to right, in the multiplication and division. Same thing with our last step then, addition and subtraction. So adding and subtracting things is comes last. Uh, we know really the opposite of adding is just subtracting, so we put those two together in the same letter as well, the A for adding. Okay, so we have G for grouping, E for exponents, M for multiplication slash division, and A for addition slash, slash subtraction. Okay. So GEMA, GEMA, make sure that gets in your notes. That is the correct order to do uh, problems in or to, to the steps to solve or simplify, I should say, numerical expressions. Okay? So if we look at a couple examples, let's look at a couple examples here. Uh, the first one that they give us here is in parentheses 6 minus 2 to the third power divided by 2. Okay, so what I see here is there's some things in parentheses with a minus sign, there's an exponent, and there's a division sign. 
Okay, so if I go back to my order of operations, the very first thing I should do is what is in the parentheses, which would be 6 minus 2. So that's why the first thing they do is change this to be a 4. Okay? So now they have done the, the parentheses part, and they got an answer for that, 4. So now it's 4 to the third divided by 2 is the problem that I have. The next part of my order of operations, since there are no more grouping symbols, no more parentheses or anything, is to do exponents. So now I look at, okay, 4 to the third power is an, an exponent. So I could use that in my calculator. 4 to the third from our last slide just really means 4 times 4 times 4. If we do that on a calculator, we get 64. Okay, 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64. Now, all I have left to simplify this problem, or this expression, is to do this division problem. 64 divided by 2, and we get a final answer of 32. Okay, so we had three steps there. Subtract inside the parentheses, raise 4 to the third power, or simplify that exponent, and then divide at the end. Okay? If we look at another example uh, here, we have a fraction, basically. But we have some interesting things on the top of that fraction. 2 to the 4th power minus 1 uh, divided by 5. Okay, 2 to the 4th power minus 1, and that's over 5. So the first thing that I need to do is deal with the top and bottom of the fraction separately. Now, the bottom is already done. It's just a 5. It's just a number. But the top has some interesting things in it. So I have to look at the top of the fraction first. So that's where I'll focus my attention. And in the top of the fraction, I notice that I don't have any parentheses or anything, but I do have an exponent right there, 2 to the 4th power, and that's the thing I have to do first according to my order of operations. So 2 to the 4th power is 16. And then uh, once I've done that simplifying of the exponent part, I just have 16 minus 1 left over here. 16 minus 1 is 15. So now the top of my fraction has gone from 2 to the 4th minus 1, where now it is just 15. Okay. Once I have done the top and bottom of the fraction and gotten each of those to just be a number, a fraction bar, remember, does mean divide. So I can just simply divide um, these two numbers, 15 divided by 5, and my final answer is 3. Okay. So following the order of operations, I get one single number answer. Very simplified and very nice. I'd like you to try a couple of those now. Uh, I'd like you to try letter A, B, and C here. A, B, and C here. Uh, simplifying these down following the order of operations. Okay, starting with your grouping symbols, which actually only show up in letter C. And then dealing with your exponents. Then doing your multiplying and dividing. And then uh, doing your adding and subtracting. So pause the video, take a look at those three problems. Then come on back and I'll show you what we should get. Okay, letter A, when we do the, five, uh, the 4 squared, we get 16. And then we have 5 times 7 is 35 minus 16 divided by 2 is 8. So we end up with 27 for letter A. Letter B, we have to do the dividing before we subtract. So 25 divided by 5 is 5. And then we do 12 minus 5, which gives us 7. And then letter C, the top of that fraction has an exponent in it. So you do 3 to the 4th first which is uh, 81, and then you do 4 plus 81, the addition part of that, and you get 85. So it's 85 on the top of the fraction, the bottom is 7 minus 2, which is 5. 85 divided by 5 is 17. So the final answer for letter C should be 17. Hopefully you got those three correct. If you did not, uh, please make a note to ask me in class tomorrow about order of operations. Your practice problems are going to be almost exclusively doing this, order of operations over and over and over again, making sure we get that Gemma, G-E-M-A, in our head and very good at it. Uh, so if you have questions, please make a note to ask me in class tomorrow. Otherwise, that's all I have for you for now. Have a wonderful night.